and uh, pre-show, so uh, leading it off, we are here today to honor two men who long before the Football Wrestling Association pre-show uh, slide the award phase. Long before the Football Wrestling Association and before it, New Midwest Wrestling, decades ago, professional wrestling at Lampton High School was held by World Wrestling Association. And with me at this time, hold the uh, whole thing plaques for uh, two of those fans who attended the Lancaster High School events back in the 1970s and 1980s. And they started attending the uh, WWE events at the age of five. Uh, Terry Myers and Scott Smith. comes a time when you have to say hey let's let's get it on Reverend Hampton we're gonna do it you know you've avoided me you've been a manager a lot of times in matches of mine you've interfered in my match Steve Regal's match Dick the Bruiser Wilbur Snyder anytime Reverend Hampton can in and cause a defeat he was there and I'll tell you this is my opportunity to help with the fans to get rid of Reverend Hampton because we're gonna have a big party a going away party when we get rid of Reverend Hampton, because this is a loser leave town match. I'm going to bring a big suitcase for him. We're going to have it in the ring. We'll pack all his old suits in it and funny looking ties and ship him back out to um, Michigan where he lives or somewhere like this. Because Spike Huber is going to be serious now. I'm going to beat this man because I'm not planning to leave Springfield. Springfield's my home, my second home. Indianapolis is my home, but I've made Springfield my second home because when I come there, the fans are more res responsive, more more crucial than anything is that I win this match, and that's just what I'm going to do. Well, I'll be right in your corner along you with all the fans. You better, Sam, because I don't plan to leave. Tonight will be the second time that I've ever been a partner of Pat O'Connor's. Three years ago in St. Louis, Pat O'Connor and I beat Harley Race and Terry Funk, two former World Heavy Championship wrestlers in a tag match. This is the second time tonight and Pat O'Connor and I vow that we're going to beat the Sheik and Abdullah for the World's Heavyweight Tag Team Championship. You people in, in Springfield deserve to see O'Connor and I for this. This is our second time together. We've, been, we've never been together in any other big town in the world. But St. Louis and Springfield tonight, we vow to beat the Abdullah and the Sheik tonight right here in Springfield. We owe it to you people. We owe it to our fans. Pat O'Connor's my best friend, and I'm not going to let him down. We're going to beat those guys. The WWA promoted events throughout the Midwest up until 1989. But as the World Wrestling Federation became the job it is now, the Capri's and Hensing Age and the talent trade became too much for it to continue. Athletes, of course, as a wrestler, held numerous championships, including the legendary NWA Missouri title 
three times and the AWA World Heavyweight title. Number four. His last high-profile appearance was as a referee in that infamous match between Sting versus the Black Scorpion, aka Ric Flair, in 1990, which Atlas made unmasking wrestlers seem like child's play. Sadly, Atlas is no longer with us as he passed away in 1991 in a weight breaking accident. Here on the video wall is a report announcing his death with his uh, brief biography. For over three decades, he ruled pro wrestling. A huge man, even at five foot ten, Dick the Bruiser towered over opponents and put big footprints on a sport that was nothing much to speak of until he came along. People would not miss a Saturday Night Wrestling if they knew Dick was going to be involved in it. Beginning in the 50s and running all the way into the 80s, Dick the Bruiser cultivated an image as a rough and tumble, good old fashioned American hero, a John Wayne of the ring an old associate of his remembers had a charisma that wrestling fans found hard to resist. And I'm gonna break them and I'm gonna take their nose, pull their tongue out. We saw up there an idol. And like any idol, if you're in the same room with that idol, uh, you know, and he responds to you, if he's looking out in the crowd, you, you think he's looking right at you. Richard Afflis was born in Delphi and attended high schools in Indianapolis and Lafayette. He wound up playing football for the Green Bay Packers of the NFL, but soon it was the money and theater of wrestling that lured him into the ring. He would, you know, he would just, you know, kind of like turn to the crowd, you know, and just, you know, raise his hand, and they, they, they go crazy. They, they could come crazy. For a quarter century, Dick promoted, syndicated, and grappled in his own televised wrestling shows building a worldwide empire and a reputation as a wild and crazy man. Yeah, I've been put out a few tavins in my day and a few ballrooms and uh, so I like that kind of stuff. But Dick the Bruiser was far more than just a wrestler. He was also an active member of the local community. Just ask local veterans about that. Long-term care patients at the VA Medical Center received visits from Dick the Bruiser at least twice a year. He was a friendly kind of guy. He wasn't your typical celebrity who would just come and say, hello, how are you? Let me sign an autograph. Good for local charities and causes like recycling, too. Dick the Bruiser will be remembered for all that, but friends say this gentle giant was something even more rare in the world of wrestling. He was a gentleman. Okay, that's all right. Hendrick Sabrandi, 6 News.
Herb Simmons. How about the wall? Hello, wrestling fans. My name is Herb Simmons. I'm the promoter of Southern Illinois Championship Wrestling, and I'm proud to say I've uh, been the promoter and founder of SICW now for 40 years. Uh, and I'm really uh, honored and uh, uh, blessed, you might say, also, to be a part of this, uh, uh, this uh, great moment uh, in wrestling. As you know, uh, wrestlers come and go, uh, promoters come and go, uh, and I'm one of the ones that are still around. Uh, and I've worked with many, many of the all-time greats. And tonight I want to talk about uh, the uh, central Illinois area, uh, Springfield, Illinois. I used to run back in there in the late 70s and early 80s, especially into the Landfair High School. Uh, and back then I had a, a group of uh, workers that uh, traveled all over uh, Missouri and Illinois, up into uh, Chicago, Indianapolis. And uh, I, I got to meet some of the greatest of all times. And tonight I want to talk about two of those gentlemen that I had the pleasure of meeting and working with. And uh, the first one is no stranger to anybody who's ever followed professional wrestling. I don't care where you live, you had to know the name Dick the Bruiser. Um, I had the f great honor of meeting Dick the Bruiser in Indianapolis, Indiana, when I was running the Southern Illinois uh, area. Uh, him and I struck up a relationship. Uh, I was booking the shows. He was providing some of my talent, and I had other talents such as uh, King Kong Bruiser Brody, uh, Dick Murdoch, Greg the Van Hammer Valentine, Cowboy Bob Orton, and the list goes on and on. But uh, tonight, uh, we're going to talk about Dick the Bruiser, uh, the kind of guy he was, one of the toughest, meanest SOBs you ever wanted to see. Um, and of course, back then, he had a gentleman with him that was on fire everywhere he wrestled, and that was uh, my good friend Spike Huber. Uh, Spike eventually ended up coming working uh, for SICW for several years. Um, after he split away from Dick the Bruiser. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, that was actually Dick the Bruiser's son-in-law, married to uh, Michelle, a sweet lady, uh, who are back together now, I might say. Um, but uh, Spike wrestled for me all over. Uh, he was a top draw for me. I tagged him with the likes of Bruiser, Brody, Steve Regal, uh, the Moondogs. Uh, I, I have all the praise in the world for the young man, Spike Huber. And we're here tonight to induct these two individuals into a um, uh, Hall of Fame. I want to show you kind of what we got here. It's the nosebleed seats of Central Illinois Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame. Proudly inducts William Hafless, that was Dick the Bruiser's real name, uh, AKA Dick the Bruiser into the Central Illinois Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame. It is an honor to induct Mr. Hafless into the Hall of Fame for his outstanding performance, determination, dedication, and professionalism in the Central Illinois Professional Wrestling. And I gotta say, as I said before, one of the toughest men that ever stepped in that squared circle. And not only are they inducting Dick the Bruiser, but as I said, the other gentleman, my good friend, Michael Huber, who was better known as Spike Huber. Same thing reads on here. Uh, these awards, I know um, uh, Spike is, uh, is still with us. Uh, he's running a uh, predominant uh, good business now. Uh, they still does some bodybuilding. Uh, but those two gentlemen deserve every honor that can be stowed upon them to be a part of such a great moment in history of professional wrestling. I just attended the 50th year of the Cauliflower Alley out in Vegas this last week, and all of the legends that are still with us was there. It was an honor, uh, and I can assure you, had Dick the Bruiser still been with us, he'd have been there at that 50th year anniversary. Uh, there's so many stories that we could tell about Dick the Bruiser, about Spike Huber, uh, but I, I want you just to do your own research. I think you'll get more out of it than me standing here going on and on and on. But again, I am honored. Um, I'm from Southern Illinois, born and raised. At one time, I was the only person in the state of Illinois that held a ballot promoter's license. Uh, I'm proud of that. Uh, and again, we're, we're going to continue to keep those memories alive that people like Dick the Bruiser and Spike Huber paved the way for. Thank you very much for your uh, time. And uh, remember, support indie wrestling because it's been around for many, many years. And for people like you to support it, hopefully it'll be around for a lot more. All right. Finally, let's hear from Spike Huber himself. Now we'll make note that uh, he, did, he did not own a video camera. So we have to make you with a video from a smartphone that sent to me. So here he is on the video wall, Spike Huber. On behalf of all my fans and friends in Central Illinois and 
the St. Louis area. I want to thank you very much for the induction of myself, Spike Huber, and Richard Apples, Dick the Bruiser, to be inducted into the Central Illinois Wrestling Hall of Fame. I would also like to thank Herb Simmons, who I had a lot of great matches there, and all the fans in Rampier High School. Thank you again. On behalf of Dick and I, thank you very much. It's an honor, and I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, we at the Nosebleed Seats proudly honor these two men, Spike Huber and William Athlas, as the newest members of the Central Illinois Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame Class of 2015. fall to this station P W C I Pro Wrestling in Central Illinois It's the end of the summer spectacular Proving Ground Pro presents Living the Dream when dreams become nightmares on September 19th at the Law Fruit Theater in Nevada, Illinois at 225 West Main Street. Who will make their dreams come true? Challenging cutting edge champion Mario Cravillo, tag team champions Team IOU, and franchise champion Blake Bellicus. And who will suffer a horrible nightmare? Find out September 19th at Proving Ground Pro's Living the Dream at the Law Fruit Theater in Nevada, Illinois. Follow us on Facebook, PGP Wrestling. It's the one year anniversary celebration as High Risk Wrestling returns to Cahokia, Illinois on Sunday, September 27th with a 4 p.m. start. See six tag teams ballot out to become the new HRW Tag Team Champions. And Blake Belkis defends the HRW Championship in a six man gauntlet match. See it all happen at the Veterans of Foreign Wars Hall at 621 Water Street in Cahokia, Illinois on September 27th. Go to facebook.com slash HRWSTL. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the final segment of the program, we are going to head to Auburn, Illinois, and show you some highlights from the grand opening of Pitfall Wrestling Association's new academy. Pitfall Wrestling Academy recently moved out of its location on Jefferson Street in Springfield to its new digs in Auburn as the mayor, Barbara Starner, and a couple of town aldermen were on hand for the ribbon-cutting ceremony at its new location on the town square at the corner of 4th and West Madison Streets. Brent Dunn and a few of the trainees joined the owners of PWA in marking the grand opening of the much larger facility. Show you a little quick tour. They now have a front office where various wrestling metrabilia is on display, including the Toka Steve Memorial plaque and the big SJR article with the past show posters. Here's where the ring is set up with the PWA entrance in the background. They actually have enough room to put in the second ring if need be. Here's where the uh, TV studio is with the green screen, tripods, and lighting ready to go. And of course, there's areas to perform cardio exercise. Training sessions are from Tuesday to Thursday each week. Go to pinfallwrestlingspringfield.net for more information. And as I alluded to earlier, this will be the eighth and final MBS Awards. And at this time, I have a statement from our founder of the MBS, uh, Christopher Cooper, that I'd like to read to you at this time. 
I've been a professional wrestling fan my entire life. I was lucky enough to be welcomed into area promotions locker rooms and befriended by many local talent. That was almost 12 years ago. A huge portion of my life was dedicated to Central Illinois professional wrestling, which resulted in me starting what would become the Nosebleed Seeds Central Illinois Pro Wrestling. With the help of Stephen Lucas, Robert Swint Jr., and Floyd Fisher, we began helping highlight the positives and sometimes negatives of an area we love so much. Our goal was simple. Show everybody how good these guys really are. We we did a lot of great things I will be forever proud of, but all good things must come to an end. It's time for this little project to go into a box of storage in my garage with old wrestling magazines and other random collectibles Stephanie Cooper hasn't made me throw away just yet. I want to thank the guys above for all their help and dedication over the years and making this little idea so special. I could go on and on tagging people all day, but I just wanted to thank a few more before we finally seal this storage tub up. My wife first and foremost for the love and support. I spent a lot of late nights working on projects and a lot of nights traveling to different towns to see shows. She was amazing throughout it all. Mike Cooper for allowing me into the GAW locker room and really getting all this kick started. Justin Clark, say what you want about J-Mac, but that dude has so much love and passion for the area and professional wrestling. Without his support of the MBS, I don't know where it would be today or if it would become anything at all. Dave Cavazas, hands down the best homeboy in the area. I could go years without talking to Dave and call him with a favor, and he would drop everything to help me. I owe that guy a big hug. Guy Smith, I could go on and on about Guy Smith and what he means to this area and me, but he wouldn't want me to, so I won't. But thanks for everything, brother. Stay focused, stay hungry, stay humble, love each other, appreciate each other, and laugh often with each other. Wishing you all the best. Christopher Cooper. And with that, the eight-year run of the MBS TV comes to a close. However, I see no reason to stop producing a local wrestling program. So, while the MBS TV ends its eight-year run, sometime in the near future, we will be debuting a new program, Pro Wrestling Central Illinois, this week. But in the meantime, we've also reached a verbal agreement with Pinfall Wrestling Association as they are going to produce a weekly public access program. So hopefully in the next few weeks we will be airing uh, PWA TV, at, which will allow me to take a break uh, for producing this program because it is quite a labor intensive uh, effort. But uh, in the meantime, uh, be sure to keep supporting your local independent wrestling promotions all across the central Illinois region and you can find out when those shows are happening by visiting the St. Louis Wrestling Community at sdlwrestling.livejournal.com. I'm the Mad Conservative Crime Fighter. I want to thank you for uh, supporting this program for the past eight years. And uh, farewell and enjoy, uh, enjoy your weekend.